Let us discuss the mammalian skeleton. Now the skeleton system in mammals can be broadly divided into two parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Now this simply means that in a mammal, you know, for example, in humans, we have 206 bones in an adult human. So all of these bones are categorized into two, axial and appendicular, mostly depending on their location and function. So when you talk about the axial skeleton, this consists of the skull, the sternum, the rib cage, and the vertebral column. Now these bones are found at the core of the body, you know, at the central part of the body. And one of their main functions is protection of vital body organs, such as the brain, the lungs, the heart, kidneys, etc. Onto the appendicular skeleton. This consists of the bones of the limbs, the forelimbs, these are also known as the arms, the hind limbs, also known as the legs. So the bones that make up these two are a part of the appendicular skeleton. Now this also consists of the girdles, the pelvic and the pectoral girdles. Okay? Now the girdles connect the bones of the arms and the legs onto the axial skeleton as such. So for example, if you have the pectoral girdle, it connects the bones of the arms onto the axial skeleton and so on. So the appendicular skeleton consists of the bones of the limbs and the pectoral and pelvic girdles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the structure of each of these bones that have been mentioned and how they are adapted to perform their function. So let us start with the axial skeleton. So as stated before, this consists of the skull, the sternum, the rib cage, and the vertebral column. Now let us start with the skull. So the skull consists of the cranium, the upper jaw, this is also known as maxilla, and the lower jaw, also known as mandible. So all these three parts together make up the skull. Now let's start with the cranium. I want you to look at the cranium, that part. If you look at it, you might mistakenly think that it just consists of one bone. It doesn't. It actually consists of 22 small bones that have been fused together, you know, that have been joined together permanently to create these strong, immovable joints that provide maximum protection to important body organs. Okay, what do I mean by this? I mean that these small bones have been joined together to create this formidable structure known as the cranium. And one of the most important functions of the cranium is that it provides protection to the body organs that are found inside of it. Which are these? Number one, you have the brain, the eye, the ear, specifically the middle and inner ear. Remember, the ear comprises of three parts. We have the outer ear and the middle and inner ear. Now, one last organ, the olfactory organs. These are the structures that we use for our sense of smell. So all of these different body organs are protected by the cranium from mechanical damage. Cool, right? Now, I want you to look closer. See those? Those are referred to as sutures. These are joints. They are the point where one bone joins with another to form the fixed immovable joint. Now, when it comes to the cranium, it has openings or perforations. These openings are very, very important because they allow blood vessels and nerves to pass in and out of the brain. And of course, you need this because, guys, what is the brain? The brain is an organ. An organ is made up of tissues. It's made up of cells and cells require nutrients and oxygen and require their waste products removed. So you need to have a constant supply of blood. And this is attainable through the blood vessels that can pass in and out through these openings. Okay, enough with the cranium. Let's talk about the maxilla and the mandible, the upper and the lower jaw. Now, when it comes to the maxilla, the upper jaw, this is fused with the cranium. So this is a permanent joint. And that is the reason why we cannot actually move our upper jaw. You know, it's fixed in position. But when it comes to the mandible, the lower jaw, it articulates with the cranium to form a movable joint. So we can move it to some degree, especially up and down movement. Now, this is the only movable bone in the skull, our lower jaw. 
it's the only movable bone in our skull. And you can test it for yourself and find out whether this is true or not. And if it's not, hey, okay. Now, I want you to make a note of this term, articulate. This is a term that you're going to come across a lot. So when you talk about articulation, you know, one bone articulating with another, this is simply the point where two bones join one another. You know, the point of connection between two bones. So when I say that bone A articulates with bone B, I simply mean that joins, you know, or meet together to form a joint. So what is the function of the mandibles and the maxilla? Mastication, chewing, the working together of these two bones allows us to chew our food. In fact, the up and down movement of our lower jaw allows us to crush and grind food against the teeth present in our upper jaw. So mastication. Now guys, one last thing. At the base of the cranium, you're going to have two surfaces that are smooth and rounded. These are known as occipital condyles. So these articulate with the first bone of the vertebral column. Pause. What is the vertebral column? That is the vertebral column, also commonly known as the backbone. So the backbone articulates with the cranium. You know, it joins, but it joins at a particular point. And it's not the whole backbone that does so. It's only the first bone of the backbone. Again, at the base of the cranium, we have these two smooth rounded projections called occipital condyles. These articulate with the first bone of the vertebral column. So as you can imagine, when you have two bones articulating with one another, it will lead to the formation of a joint. Now, this joint is very important to us because it allows us to nod our head as such. So nodding of our head is the result of the joint that is formed between the occipital condyles at the base of the cranium and the first bone of the vertebral column. This bone is known as the atlas. Now, summarizing this information, what are the functions of the skull in total? Number one, protects key body organs such as the brain, the eye, the olfactory organs and such from mechanical damage. Number two, it provides a surface for attachment of the head muscles. Now, in case you're wondering, head muscles, yes, muscles are the ones that are responsible for movement, but they need to have a surface to attach to. So in the case of the head, these muscles attach onto the skull. Now, how do we use the muscles of our head? They have so many specialized functions. So for example, the, in the case of the eye muscles, we use them for blinking, for twitching of the eye and so on. Facial expressions, when you frown, when you smile, this is as a result of the muscles that are attached to your skull. What about chewing? Again, muscles. So another function of the skull is that it provides a mechanism for chewing. How? Through the mandible and the maxilla. And the last one, it articulates with the atlas to form a joint that allows nodding of the head. So those are four functions of the skull. Moving on to the next part of the axial skeleton, the ribcage and the sternum. Now, in humans, we have 12 pairs of ribs, so a total of 24. But did you know that some people are born with an extra rib and they don't have any health problem? What is even more astonishing is that some people are even born with missing ribs. Hey! Now, when it comes to the ribs, they articulate with other bones at the front and back. What did we say about articulation? This is simply when one bone joins with another. And it is expected. You cannot have ribs just, you know, suspended. They have to be connected to another part of the skeleton. So at the front, ribs are joined to the sternum. At the back, you're going to have the ribs articulating with vertebrae specifically the thoracic vertebrae. These are found in the upper back. Now, talking about the sternum, what is the sternum? This is a very rigid structure that is commonly referred to as the breastbone. Now, the sternum has two main functions. 
Number one is that it supports the ribs, da, because it articulates with them, so it provides support to the ribs. And number two is that it protects the organs that are found in the thoracic cavity. So the thoracic cavity is this space that houses organs that are very important to circulation of blood and gaseous exchange, specifically the heart and lungs. So with the location of the sternum, it provides protection to the heart and lungs from mechanical damage. Now with the ribs articulating with the sternum and the thoracic vertebrae, they form this structure that is known as the rib cage. Now this has the following functions. Number one is that it encloses the thoracic cavity and therefore protects organs that are present within from mechanical damage. I'm talking about the heart and the lungs and other delicate organs that are found inside. Number two is that it provides a surface for attachment of intercostal muscles for breathing. Now intercostal muscles are muscles that are necessary for breathing to take place. So they are responsible for the breathing movements, you know, for the movement of the ribcage upwards, outwards, inwards, downwards, and so on. By the way, I have an amazing video explaining all of this to you, broken down into two parts under gaseous exchange. Be sure to check it out. Now, the last function of the ribcage is that it consists of floating ribs. Pay attention, floating ribs provide a surface for attachment of bar muscles. Now, up to this point, there are two things that I would like you to note about the ribs. So, we have been talking about articulation of the ribs at the front and at the back. That at the front, they articulate with the sternum and at the back, they articulate with the thoracic vertebrae. But I would like you to note that at the points where they articulate with these two, they have cartilage, as you can clearly see. Now, the second thing that I would like you to note is that all ribs articulate with the sternum at the front except for the last two ribs. These are not attached to the sternum and they are referred to as floating ribs. Now, these provide a surface area for attachment of the back muscles. Now, guys, we are going to pause here. In the next part of our video, I'm going to be discussing the vertebral column in thorough detail, leaving nothing behind. See you there.